Hey everyone, this is Matt. Um, today, just coming to you with a video. I there's been a lot of discussion in the uh, one of the groups about when are you ready to transition uh, to part time or from part time to full time. And I came up with just a little list of things that maybe you can check off to see if you are particularly ready uh, to make that move. Um, we're going to start right in here, of course, with branding. Identity is so important nowadays. Uh, when you're, and it depends on what your goal is. You know, if your goal is part time, branding may not be as important. But I think it's great, no matter to keep your options open for the future. No matter what you do, if you build a brand, a successful brand, you're going to get more invitations to events. You're going to get uh, booked for caterings more often. Uh, your name recognition really becomes. Uh, necessary for your future success and starting that early is number one I mean get out there on Facebook even before you get have your first day and start pumping it get an Instagram of you cooking your food make people really you know want to be all about your cart your truck your whatever um, you know street food is a very uh, uh, big business on uh, looking it's a big uh, on appeal and the quicker you start building your appeal to your potential customers um, the better you're off uh, for instance you know uh, around Knoxville even if they don't know my name is Matt they know me as hey bow ties here um, you know and, and I try to always incorporate the bow tie into something just because that's what sticks seems to stick with people more than anything else about my brand and even though we've changed the name from you know bow ties and hot dogs to bow tie street food and catering, the bow tie is really what kept everything together. So start building your brand, and if you haven't, then step one, guys. Second, of course, is to know your menu. Uh, what are you going to be serving? Uh, what are you going to be all about? And don't be afraid to change this down the road because you're going to find certain things work, certain things don't. When I first started out with just hot dogs, man, I I thought it was cool to have. 16 to 20 different types of mustard at all times and what I found is 90% of the people who use French's mustard or Heinz mustard and Don't really care, but they think it's cool So I still keep around five to six when I do that But you know it can become a big cost you know something like that you're gonna learn It's like man every time I'm going to the grocery store I'm buying $20 worth of mu strange mustards because they've gone bad or uh, you know, they're half empty and they look crappy and stuff like that uh, Dried and crusty and everything like that. So know your menu, but you know in your heart um, You may make changes and be okay with that But definitely get uh, what you think your top three items will be and get your brand done with that And what I mean by that is if you haven't done a taste test um, You really shouldn't be thinking about are you going full-time yet? You're not there yet But you can get there Licensing number three guys make sure you're all your licensing's done uh, Find out anything you need to do through your state You want to be completely legal in aspects of tax aspects of health department business codes anything like that and find out first What situations you're gonna run into? Um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people like oh, I was gonna do this next week But the ordinance doesn't let me do that start fighting those battles ahead of time while you're still employed somewhere else Or you're still doing something like that um, to get ahead and you know most of those don't give up on that ordinances were made 30 40 years ago by people who own brick-and-mortar restaurants who wanted to keep the local food vendor out Well, they were completely illegal. They are completely illegal and they're very easy to fight once you get the information you need Jason Brown's a great example of that. He can help you with that with the Institute of Justice um, You know go from there insurance do not do not start vending before you get insurance, guys. I understand, you know, everyone's got different situations and everything else. $300 to flip. I think it's a little less if you join Vendors United and get the, the discount. Maybe like $280 or $290. But it's totally worth it. The first time something gets stolen from you or you get in a wreck. I mean, we just had a vendor get, what, sideswiped not long ago? And Flip took care of him completely for $300 a year, guys. Uh, but what if that had been that's a cart, you know, that's a couple thousand dollars What if that had been somebody getting food poisoning or somebody getting? Uh, hurting themselves or something like that medical bills can pile up very quickly, you know that million dollar policy uh, You know compared to three hundred dollars is not that big of a deal save the three hundred dollars go to a loan place and get three hundred bucks If you have to but please do not go full-time uh, until you have that now guys Here's one no one wants to talk about because it is a little personal. But and so I'm gonna be vague and general about it, but at the same time, I'm gonna give you examples. 
finances. And everyone who's come to visit with me and uh, do consultations and such, I've spoken to them about the need for their finances to be in order. Um, guys, it, you know, there's a big difference. Uh, well, let me just put it this way. You know how much money you need to make, realistically. And people tell me a lowball figure, but then they come back, oh, well, actually, you know, I really need to do this. Okay, you need to have that number very seemingly. I mean, if you're leaving a job that makes $50,000 a year, you hopefully need to replace that or know that you're going to have to sacrifice some if your first locations don't pan out. Your first year is going to be tough. I mean, yes, there's a lot of you know people out there that have some very successful first years and such, but trust me, year two is a lot easier than year one. Uh, year three, easier than year two uh, because going back to branding, your menus, everything else is in order at that point. You're rolling. You know, Success creates further success. But guys, know your finances. Be real with yourself. You don't want to end up in a situation uh, where you can't pay your bills. And you remember, the way these businesses work, you're going to have really good months and you're going to have some not so good months. You know, I have months where you can you can bank, you know, 10, 12, 13 grand in a month. And then you have months where you do almost nothing uh, profit wise if you don't get the right event, if you get screwed over, certain things can happen. Um, you know, that's uh, how it goes. Um, so know your finances, really know when you're going to be able to that. And that comes to my next point, which is just a safety net. This is some good old classic um, financial peace university type stuff, what I'm talking about, but having a safety net. Uh, build that up first. I highly recommend if you can uh, build up one month, get a, um, get a month ahead on your bills if you can. You know, pay ahead of time on your mortgage, pay on your rent, get, get to where you're paying uh, so this is November. Get to, you should be paying December's bills right now. Um, it'll take a lot of stress off you. You have a bad event. It's not gonna you know have heart palpitations or something like that. And I see that, and that's what leads to frustration and quitting. And I see a lot of food trucks quit for that and everything else because they they are in you know that's the number one reason I would say people quit because they have a bad one bad month and they feel like they're dead. And uh, so you need to have that safety net. Make sure your finances, guys. You know, uh, you know, there's, I'm not a finance guy, you know, so I'm not going to uh, pretend to be, but uh, try to get it in before you make that switch in as good of order as you can, paying off credit cards, car loans, anything you can to uh, put as little financial burden on yourself that first year as possible. Um, guys, seven, courage. Do you have the courage to go out there and become your own boss the self-motivation to become your own boss and push yourself every single day. And trust me, that is not easy. I know people that are ironclad, tough, but it, it definitely is different when you have to push yourself. Um, you know, you have a boss generally motivating you when you're working somewhere else. Uh, you're not going to have a boss that's doing that um, other than yourself. And you are the boss. You are the CEO. And you have to motivate yourself, guys. If you're wondering why you don't have a new location this month, you cannot look at anyone else but yourself. Did you hand out 100 business cards this month? Did you hand out 300 business cards this month? Did you go speak to people or did you just email them? The buck stops with you. Those are questions that a CEO would ask you if you were an employee. So you've got to ask yourself those at that point. And do you have the courage to ask yourself those questions and keep yourself pushed at all times? That is when you are ready to move to a full-time status, guys. That is when you are ready to really embrace this life, which is crazy. It's fun. I love it. It's provided me so much time uh, to be at home with my children, so much time that I can uh, uh, you know, just spend uh, doing stuff like this, talking to you. Um, you know, but you know, it definitely comes with the stress and the uh, uh, how do I put that? Just the stress of, of uh, heavy lies the crown. You are the king of your castle. You are the king of your cart, your food truck, whatever it is. Um, and you know it, it stops with you. So are you ready to go for that, guys? If you are ready, then do it. Um, that's that is the most gut wrenching decision you will ever make. I took a vacation the week I was ready to. You know, I used to manage Cracker Barrel. And I went on vacation the last week of February, and um, I came back March 1st, 
and I turned my notice in before I could back out. I did want to wait through the winter. Um, we had just had a kid in November, um, my, uh, my uh, Tadashi, and uh, we kind of planned that out time-wise. But, uh, you know, it was... Uh, it was nerve-wracking. There's no jo- you know, joke about that. And I had a pretty good idea that I could succeed. I, I had locations lined up, ready to go. I had other things uh, in order. Um, I had a little bit of buffer. I actually got three weeks paid out. I mean, I put my notice in. The next day I came in and they told me, you know, Matt, thank you. In restaurants, you don't usually work notices. They just pay you out because they think you're going to steal all the good employees, which we, you do. Um, but uh, So I get three weeks pay just given to me uh, two weeks notice and then a week of vacation they still owed me that they paid out. Uh, so I had my first three weeks finance, but not everyone's going to have that luxury. But guys, it's on you. And that's the bottom line thing you've got to understand is that making that transition from not being a vendor to being a part-time vendor is just as hard. But then you've got to really make that decision. When's the right time to move into a full-time status? And can you do that? And are you prepared? You're going to have to know that in your heart. I can't sit here in my house and tell you that you're ready to do this. Uh, Only you can know and only you are going to have to answer for it at the end of the day. I can give you all the advice in the world and if it screws up and you don't, uh, but you're not out vending every day and you're not, if you're not vending, if you're not banging on doors every day, it falls on you. You can't say, oh, I got bad advice from somebody on the internet. You know, that's just stupid, you know. Bad advice on the internet is sending some guy in Nairobi uh, three thousand dollars so he can send you five million. Uh, this is good advice, and you get good advice from all the vendors around, uh, especially in Vendors United, especially from Ben. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it, you've got to know yourself, and you got to know: Are you prepared to do this? And if you are, do it. Just do it. Get, you know it, what's standing in your way, guys. I started this business with $2,500. I bought a cart, got my licensing, got my insurance, got a hitch put on my van, and we started, all right? I was still making pretty good money at that point, though, and so there wasn't that fear going part-time. The fear part-time was, and as I found, was can I actually grow the business only working one day a week or two days a week at the most, And but even then, you know, we started working on branding, getting out in you know, the bars at night, getting our names out, um, you know, showing that our food was the best, um, you know, dropping off food at places that we were trying to get into and saying, hey, you got to try this, man. Um, that's what you should be doing. Guys, I hope this helped in some way. Just felt like talking. So you all have a good one and take care. I'm not good at looking at this instead of like the screen. It's kind of confusing. Anyway, y'all take care.